Okay, um, I was that grasshopper. So to open grasshopper, uh, any questions about interfaces? Are you okay? Okay. Um, probably. Okay. So what is the? Uh, okay. So I give you a curves. Okay. I will kind of uh, go through about how to create curves in Rhino, and using grasshopper because uh. Kind of, you need to make it some little bit uh, more complex uh, curves and surfaces. So I'll a little bit go through today. So always, uh, I recommend you start with the basic elements of pro. Uh, what is the basic elements of geometry? Yeah, simple points. So you have, you can set up points. Just simply double click. I would type point. You can set one point, or you can set multiple points. So the difference is, so I will just double check that. Then actually you can get some coordinate here. But probably this is not an ideal way, rather you probably may want to have some point from your sketches or some or from your outside and use it as reference. But the difference is that if you use reference point using object snap here and here and here and here I only select two points, I select more points so here and here and here and here you see the four points okay. But make sure that you have this one had a remember the sequence. So kind of instead of doing this, uh, this one's so far okay. That's so far okay. But I will just simply for now I just simply one point. That's it. So I have one point. And then probably I had another point. Uh, I just simply copy and paste it. And then set another point. And then what I'm, what the reason why I'm showing you this one is because I want to introduce you nerve curve. And nerve curve, I will change the display to draw from draw icon full name. So nerve curve requires vertices. What is, what is vertice? So he said is curve control point. Uh, what is control point? So that's why we need a little bit about um, nerve curve. Can, uh, can anyone say what is the what is the name what is the meaning of nerve curve? Yes. What does it mean? <laughs> so nerve curve. Can you see me? <laughs> Nerve curve is kind of defined by point called control point. The curve does not pass through it. Basically, it is draw a kind of control line. It start with the the curve start with the control line, but it does not really pass through it, and it draws something like this. And then, as you see, there's a degree. If, if, the, if the degree is 1, it will be straight line. So let's sit together. So what is the assumption here? How many points do I need to draw a nerve curve? What is the minimum number of points to draw a nerve curve? Who think it's 4? Ah, oh, you're smart. <laughs> Who think it's 3? <laughs> okay, so you got that idea? Actually, it's two. Actually, it, it may not need the center control point, but let's just draw. So I will just make a copy and paste. And then I just uh, set the first point. Uh, probably uh, the first, second one is here. Yeah, I will just reset everything. So first point somewhere in the original point. Uh, second point, as I just drew there, I just try to draw here. Third point, uh, somewhere in the low part, and fourth point, 
somewhere here. So we have four point. This one coordinate. How can we draw? Okay, if I draw it, draw one curve to vertices. Yeah, it has one. If I draw connect the second one, it automatically delete the first one. Do you know how can I how can I add the second one? Mm -hmm. So use shift button. Then actually you can connect multiple points. Here. But this one is a little bit strange, isn't it? So first one is here. Second one is here. Third one is here. This one is here. So probably we may need more points probably. It, oh, okay. Do, do you know why? What is the problem? Why this one understand the second one as the first point? Because we, because I connect the second one first. So I will disconnect everything, and first come first. Second one goes next. Oh, okay. I will go again. So first one. Second one, third one, fifth one. So you got that? So why sequences are important? Because it is list. List is how can we access list using index. So this is one way of using it. Simplify that. Another way, something clear way is actually first prepare a list of points first. So I kind of, uh, the way is using merge. Merge is a, a tool that make a list. So I simply connect first one first, second one the second, and it automatically make another one, and third one, and fourth one. I disconnect everything here. And and then let's take a look at it. What is that? So panel. If you take a look at that, this one is list of four points indexed from zero to three. And what is the data structure? Using uh, parameter viewer. The name is parameter viewer. So the answer for our attendance keys is parameter viewer. And then data with one branch. I copy one more. I connect it and double click it and it shows the visually the structure of data. So then actually I connect it simply to vertices. Actually it do the same thing. But <coughs> excuse me. So why do I did that here? Why do I use this one? And then probably if you, so and then actually simply I want to make clear in terms of algorithm, I just say the first process, step one, uh, collect point, input, uh, user selected point, output, list of points. And then probably I group them, select everything, and group them. So this one is clearly show that the algorithm that what am I doing? I'm just simply collect points, that's it. And the next one is actually draw curves. Yes? show that you didn't listen to me. <laughs> shift, shift and connect it. But yeah. Input parameter 
Anyone using nerve curves with points, weights, and knots instead of vertices, degree, and periodic? Okay, go to, for Asiago, go to primitive. How about using uh, spline? How about using nerve curve, this one? Oh, thi oh this one is there, I think. Okay, I just found that there are two nerve curves. The one has vertices, degree, periodic. The other one is. Oh, dude, this was the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so use it. But I think Siago has the same thing, nerve curve, but it has different options. Anyone has different options other than. There's two of them. One is nerve space curve, and one is just nerve curve. Oh, I see. Yeah, you are using nerve space curve. Okay. Yeah, so okay, draw this one from spline. Use this one, nerve curve, the third one in a row here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other problem or issues? Uh, have you got this one so far? Uh, yes? Uh huh. This one? Then actually, it will show another third one after that. If you just keep connecting it, it will show additional options. Any further question? Okay, I simply copy all these. Wait, um, yeah. The merge, how do you add five points? So simply just okay. if you connect first one first, second one second, and you will show up additional button. Keep continuously. Oh, okay, okay. Don't connect everything in one uh, one node. Okay. okay, I'll repeat one more time. Simply copy and paste. I locate it underneath it. I just simply reset point. Okay, set one point somewhere outside. Second point somewhere outside. Third point here and fourth point. So I have two curves. So are you ready so far? No. So I simply copy the, the whole thing <laughs> and then just I reset four points. What I'm going to walk through is actually hold this part surface area. 
So first we can use hmm. So we are going to walk through this one. So we all use we all know how to use loft, right? So simply loft we need two curves, that's it. So it create one surface. And now I'm kind of introducing about the visual options. If I click this one, don't draw any preview geometry. It will just hide everything. And then this one, draw wireframe. And then the last one is actually show the surface. So use it. Uh, if you probably, you may want to use this one only when you want to see the original, some point there. Actually, we didn't use it at all, so I will just delete that. And this one, only draw preview geometry for selected object. So if I select it, if I select this one, it shows that this one shows the curve, this one shows the last one. And then if this one is, you can change some color. And then I'm talking about uh, baking it. So if you right click it, bake it, then this one, uh, so I will select layer one, and then okay. Then actually this one is the actual geometry created by your grasshopper. All the previous one is just temporary, temporary visualization of your geometry, not the fixed one. And this one is actually your object, the, your final object. You can print or you can laser cut, whatever you want to do. But I will delete that. Can you, can you your like multiple times? Yes. Baking do is create actual final geometry. Yes. So that's what bake do. So we have surface now. Uh, let's do something simple one, which is probably extrude a surface. So you can extrude the surface like this. And then you are just simply connect the lofted one to base. And then you need direction. What I will do is simply extract parameters. It says direction. And I will set one vertices. I will do it uh, vertical way to the top. Uh, okay. So here's the surface. Uh, it does not show me extrude. Okay, you see that? So I this one is extruded surface. I will change the viewport perspective. So here's my surface, but it looks like I extrude it on y, y direction. So I reset the vector to top way, left. So I think this, this, uh, let's see, view, right, here. So I just right mouse click near the direct, and uh, what I did was, I will do it again, I'll disconnect it, uh, what I did was, Select right mouse button, yeah. and then here, extract parameter. Oh, okay. Then it will create a parameter for you. And then you see this yellow mark? Yeah. This is warning. What does, what, let's read. Floating parameter direction failed to collect data. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Means there's no director set yet. So I simply, I, I will set, uh, set one vector and I set it to top way. Okay, I then select it. Okay, I'll just unclick this one so I can see everything. So now you see that this one is created, but this a little bit to me is strange. Okay, so this one looks better. I don't know, this one is, this, I don't know, this one is X, Y, Z, okay. The view is a little bit strange. Yeah, I will just use this one. Okay, now I'm going to use contour. You know, probably you know how to use contour manually. So I type contour, which is, there are many contour here. Create a set of beta mesh. It's not familiar, so I'm not, I, do not, I do not use it. Create a set of curve contour, so it looks familiar to me. So I use contour. It's also in probably in surface utility. Uh, I don't know where it is. Curve utility. 
I don't know where this is. I simply type control. I just double click. I type control. You will see multiple contours. Take a look at the descriptions of each element, uh, part, uh, component. And then I will select EX means old one. So probably this one is from previous version. And contour, I will select this one, the contour create a set of curve contours instead of a set of b-wrap or mesh i will explain about b-wrap and mesh a little bit a couple of weeks later okay so i will uh, create contour and i connect the surface let's see what is the error input parameter distance failed so there's no distance data conversion failed from b-wrap to curve let's take a look at one at a time so first i will extract point so using extract parameter and the point this one let's read it what this point means contour start point so it should be somewhere base point so I set one point somewhere any point underneath so using object snap near mid so probably I cannot really select it so instead what if any idea about how can I select the lowest point when I cannot select it No, we already have these points where we can use one of these points. So I'll probably temporarily I drag it back. Yes, and then simply I just simply connect one of the point. Then this one is let's take a look at what is this point. So this point is actually this one. I'm going to use this one as my base point for contour and drag back here. And what is direction? So direction is where the vector, where do you want, in which direction do you want to generate? So I will select one vector by using shift key, but this one is a little bit difficult. So I'm using right view. So there's two ways. You can directly set one vector. Do you see that? Even without extracting it, you can set it. But actually I recommend you use extract parameter and set the value from there. Do you see the differences? You can set the value directly inside this component by right clicking directly. Okay, so I will delete this one. You can set the value directly here, set one vector. But instead of doing that, I recommend extract a parameter, visually clarify that you have an input. So I'll extract parameter and I'll set one vector. And then finally, we need distance. So for that, actually this one requires some number. So actually I'll, I'll prefer to use number slider. So number slider. The second one, number slider. There's only one number slider. And then I will connect here. But still, it has a problem. Let's see what is the problem. Uh, curve. Curved contour. Ah, okay. This one is contour. I picked the wrong one. Yeah, this one is contour the... So we need actually... Uh, which contour? I will just type. Okay, so actually we need to use the B-Rep, not the contour one. Sorry for that. This one will contour the curve. On the other hand, this one will contour a shape, three-dimensional shape. So sorry for that. I will use this one. And I connect this one shape, point, distance, and direction. Then you will see the, do you see the contoured curve line here? And if you change the distance, you can see the kind of like it will generate a contour curve. Using the wrong yeah, I used the wrong control. Oh. So use uh, we should use contour. We should use this one. This one will contour a shape or volume. This one will contour a line. Let's take a look at the result again. So I'll use panel. 
the data is many lines many many lines but now you will realize that this one is a little bit different data structure than before so if I use a view parameter this one said there are 16 branches and then actually this one has two numbers on the other hand the first one has only one value so now actually we have different structure of data and the question is next time when you use it this one is a little bit behave a little bit differently than these two guys so always make sure that how does the data structure look like and make sure that when you use this one this will follow the data structure for another input and then now we need to learn I will go deeper next week again and again to match the data structure similar with before but let's take a look at about other one too so let's trace how the data structure look like so now this one is the same data structure this one is one branch this one is one branch and then I will do it one more time for here so now this one is the same data structure so so far we have all same structure and also this one this one is also the same data structure and finally this contour is a new data structure created so it is not so important whether you remember what is the actual value of course that kind of understanding the actual value is important but more important is actually understanding the data structure and then now you realize that this one is changed if you want to change this data structure to the our previous one simply use flatten tree and then simply connect the tree and then let's see the new data type And now you see that something similar now become a simple data structure. Let's see the value. Now you see that this one is our uh, first level first level data structure. So this is quite critical thing in handling data structure. Any questions so far? Hey. So actually this one is the same thing as this one, curve. So this one, do you see that? This one has one curve underneath it. This one is the same, same structure, but multiple curves in simple data structure. So actually what you can do, you can use loft again. So let's try, instead of having, since we have curves here, I know it's, it's, it's not gonna work, but kind of you are creating another loft, another kind of contour the surface and then you manipulate that okay let's do a little bit fun part uh, okay what I'm going to do is I will move slightly them so I connect geometry motion I will extract it and then motion I will set one vector slightly oblique way very little bit and then you see that everything is a little bit shifted okay so let's do a little bit further to be to make it as clear so I have another curves and then probably rotate those curves angle So now do you see that this one is rotated and then actually we can loft it again these curves and then we create it but you see that the bottom part is a little bit different for somehow this one is closed actually surfaces so now you see that input and outputs are connected each other so now again from now on it became also very archaic and it's kind of like difficult to understand if someone has this kind of code actually even even if it is you who made this code actually it's kind of very difficult to understand a couple of days later so what do we need? Huh? 
yeah, all n yeah we need to group them and we need to cluster them to understand it uh, 